So friends, in this uh, series of tutorial, today we are going to discuss a new numerical problem which is based on the overhanging beams. So this is the diagram. In this, a UDL is acting over a length of 4 meter and a point load is acting at this point D. Now first step is always to select the reactions at the point A which is acting suppose in vertically upward direction and the reaction at the point B is also acting in vertically upward direction. And we know that RA plus RB is equal to net vertical load acting over this beam. Okay. So RA plus RB is equal to 20 kN. Okay. And plus 18 that is the intensity of the UDL into this length that is over which this UDL is spread it. Okay. Which is 4 meter. So 18 into 4 is and the sum will give us 92. Now we will find out the reaction. Sorry. We will consider moment about the point A that is the hinge is equal to 0. So summation of all the moment about the point A is equal to 0. So this is the moment about the point A. Because of the RB, there will be a moment in anti-clockwise direction having magnitude that is equal to magnitude of RB into the distance 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. And because of this force, there will be a clockwise rotation of this beam AD about the point A and it will produce a mo magnitude of 20 into this distance 4 plus 5 plus 2 is equal to 11 that is 20 into 11 and because of this UDL there will be a load of 18 into 4 okay 18 into 4 magnitude and it will act in vertically downward direction at a distance of 2 meter okay so 18 into 4 into 2 will give us clockwise rotation about the point A this load UDL so when we solve this, what will we get? We will get RB as 40.44 kN and RA as how much? RA will come out to be 51.55 kN using this equation, that is the first equation. Now friends, we will calculate the shear force at the various point A, C, B and D. We will calculate the shear force on the left side of the point A and on the right side of the point A. And similarly, we do this for the point B and the point D also. Why? Because there is a point load acting at the point A, suppose in the form of reaction acting at the point A and at the point B, there is also a point load in the form of reaction RB is acting and at the point D, there is 20 kN point load is acting. That's why we have to calculate the shear force on the left side and on the right side of these points A, B and D. And at the shear and at the point C, there is no point load acting. That's why we will calculate directly shear force at the point C by constructing section at the point C. Now, friends, on the left side of the point A, the beam terminates. That's why shear force on the left side of the point A is zero. Shear force on the right side of the point A. If you want to find out, then you have to construct a section here on the right side of the point A. This is the section XX constructed here. Now, friends, the R A value is 51.55 kilonewton. And because of this RA, there will be a shear force of magnitude how much RA plus RA. Okay, and RA value is how much? 51.55 kN. Positive sign taken because using this sign convention. Okay, we all know that this is a section XX similar to our section XX, and the load is acting vertically upward direction over, uh, over this small element. And similar is true for this case that this reaction RA is acting over this small element between the point A and the section XX. That's why taken as positive. Okay, now shear force at the point C, if you want to calculate, then draw a section here passing through the point C. Suppose this is a section which is passing through this point C. Now looking on the left side of the section, you can see that this force RA is contributing toward a positive shear force about this section XX. And this UDL is contributing toward a shear force of magnitude. How much? the intensity of the UDL into sorry it is creating a negative shear force the intensity of this UDL 18 into this span 4 meter okay and it is taken negative by using this sign convention okay because UDL will act like this here at a distance of 2 meter from the point A and having a magnitude of 18 into 4 okay so it will create a negative shear force assuming this sign convention so when you solve this you will get the value of shear force as minus 20. Now we will calculate the shear force at the point B for the on the left side of the point B. So constructing a section on the left side of the point B, this is the section XX and looking 
on the left side of this section you can see that this calculation will repeat itself that is the this calculation which has uh, i have done for the shear force at the point c and it will give us 20 kilo newton you can repeat you can do it by yourself okay so it the same value will come out here repeat itself now shear force on the right side of the point b if you want to calculate you can construct a section here on the right side of the point b okay this is the section axis constructed here now you can look on the right side of this section also you can uh, also look on the left side but here to reduce the calculation i'm looking on the right side of this section so this force is contributing toward a positive shear force of 20 kilonewton okay using this sign convention and shear force at on the left side of the point d will remain as it is that is 20 kilonewton you can do it by constructing a section on the left side of the point d okay you will find the same thing and shear force on the right side of the point d is zero because it's beam terminates on the right side of the point d now we will draw the shear force diagram now see friends shear force at the point a is zero so making a cross here at zero on the left side of the point a and shear force on the right side of the point a is going to 51.55 so above the point a all the positive thing will lie above this line ad so above the point a we go 51.155 kilonewton distance okay now uh, shear force at the point C is suppose minus 20 so minus 20 is suppose lie somewhere here below the point C this is minus 20.45 and shear force on the left side of the point B is also minus 20 so making on the same label we will draw make a cross of below the point B having minus 20.45 kilonewton and shear force on the right side of the point B is 20 kilonewton so it is increasing here uh, on the above the point B to 20 kilonewton and shear force at the point D is zero. Now joining first point with the second with a straight vertical line because there is a point load lying at the point A in the form of direction RA and joining second point with the third point with an inclined line because there is a UDL line between the point A and C and joining the third point with the fourth with a straight horizontal line because there is no load lying between point C and B and joining these two point with a vertical line because there is a point load acting in the form of RB is acting at the point B and again joining the last two points with the inclined line with a uh, straight line sorry actually shear force at the point D is coming out to be 20 sorry this was 20 kilonewton okay and this was zero so joining this point with this and this point with this so you will get your shear force diagram now we will draw the bending moment diagram but before that we have to find out the point at which the shear force is going to zero so at this point is lying here between the a and c a and c okay suppose this is lying at a distance of x1 from the from the point a this point eh? okay and this is lying at a distance of x2 from the point c okay so this distance this point is where the shear force is zero okay now this is suppose y1 okay and this is y2 this length okay is y2 so see this these two triangle this triangle okay this triangle and this triangle okay now we have to find out the point at which the shear force is zero that is the value of x1 we have to find out so these are two similar triangles so according to the property of similar triangles for this triangle okay this triangle y1 by x1 okay is equal to y2 by x2 for this triangle okay this triangle y2 by x2 also we know that friend x1 plus x2 is equal to 4 meter okay this distance AC is 4 meter that's why x1 plus x2 is 4 meter so our x1 is equal to 4 minus x2 now putting this value of x1 here so y1 divided by 4 minus x2 okay is equal to y2 divided by x2 when you solve this by putting the value of y1 as uh, how much 51.55 y1 is 51.55 and y2 as, as 20.45 okay neglecting the sign here now you will get 4 minus x2 this is the equation in terms of x2 only when you solve this equation you will find that the value of x2 is coming out to be 1.3 1.136 and the value of x2 x1 is coming out to be 2.864 so this x1 is 2. Point how much 2.864 so I am rubbing this thing okay I hope you have understood this thing so x1 is coming out to be how much 2.864 only this thing is needed now I am rubbing this 
So this is the distance at which the shear force is going to zero from the point A. Now we will draw the bending moment diagram for that. We have to calculate the bending moment at the point A, C, D and B. So we will calculate the bending moment at the point A, C, D and D directly. Uh, we do not have to con uh, calculate the bending moment in the left side of the point A and on the right side of the point A. Similarly, we have to do, do, the, do that thing also with C, B and D. We do not do, have to do that. Why? Because there is no concentrated movement lying at, uh, lying at any of the point A, C, B and D. So we will directly calculate the bending moment by constructing the section at the point A, B, C and D. So constructing a section here at the point A. So this is the section axis constructed here. Now friends, see this. Uh, bending moment at the point A is equal to zero because there is nothing lying on the L LHS of this section. Okay, so the bending moment at the point A is zero. Bending moment at the point C can be found out by constructing a section passing through this point C. Now looking on the left side of this section, you can see that this force that is the R A is contributing toward a bending moment of 51.55 into this distance of 4 meter. Okay, and it is positive in nature. Why? Because it is creating a sagging bending movement. This force is trying to make the concavity of this portion AC in upward direction like this about this section XX. Similar to this case. This is the our section XX. This is the sign convention section XX. And this is the our force and this is the force of the sign convention and it is trying to create a concavity up like this. So it is treated as positive. Now the shear force because of this UDL, shear, sorry, bending movement because of this UDL, AC, which is lying between AC, will be equal to how much? Let us see this. So it will equal to minus 18 into 4, that is the magnitude of this UDL. Okay, 18 into 4 is the magnitude of this UDL, and it is acting at a distance of 2 meter from this section axis, that is from the point C. Okay, 2 meters. So multiplying it by 2, so what we will get? We will get 62.62.2. Okay, unit I am not writing because it will create a little bit confusion. The unit is kilonewton meter, so you can do it by yourself. Now, bending moment at the point B, I will calculate for that. Construct a section here passing through the point B. Now, I will look on the right side of this section because calculation will minimize. We look, I will look on the right side of this section. So, because of this uh, point low, there will be a uh, negative bending moment about this section xx of magnitude the magnitude of this force 20 into this distance 2 meter so it will give us minus 40 okay now bending moment at the point d is zero because if we construct a section passing through this point d then there is nothing lying on the right side of this section so that's why bending moment at point d is equal to zero now friends now friends we will find out the maximum bending moment. The maximum bending moment will act at a distance of x1 from the point A. Because at a distance x1, this shear force is going to zero. Suppose this is the point K. So at the point K here, suppose this is the point K, we will construct a section xx and we will find the bending moment at this section xx because bending moment is maximum where shear force is zero. So shear force is zero at the point K. That's why bending moment maximum at this section xx which is passing through this point K. So because of this, uh, reaction RA there will be a bending moment of magnitude plus 51.55 into the distance which is x1 so the distance between this section xx and this uh, point A is x1 so it will give us x1 and it uh, because of this UDL which is lying between the point A and this is section xx there will be a negative bending movement because considering this sign convention of magnitude the intensity of this load the UDL is 18 and it is spread it over a length of x1 between the point A and this section xx so this will give x1 and it will act at a distance of x by 2 from this section xx that is it will act here at a distance of x1 by 2 okay from this section xx okay so I will take here x1 by 2 when you put the value of x1 as 2.864 what you will get? You will get the value of the maximum bending moment as 73.8078. Now friends, we will draw the bending moment diagram. So friends, bending moment at the point A is 0, so we can cross here. Bending moment at the point C is 62.2, so above the point A, mark here as 62.2. And at the point B, the bending moment is minus 40, so minus 40 suppose lies somewhere here. 
and at the point D bending moment is again going to 0. So friends, bending moment is maximum at this distance x1 that is at the point at this point k. So its value is 73.8078. So mark here above the point k at a distance of 73 points uh, suppose 8 uh, cross here above the point k. Now join the point k first point with the second point with a parabola because the shear force diagram is an inclined line between the point A and K and between the point K and this point C you have to again read these two points of the shear bending moment diagram with a parabola because there is a UDL line between the point K and C and the shear force diagram is an inclined line between point K and C and point these two points are joined with a straight uh, inclined line because the bending to the shear force diagram is a horizontal line between these two points and these two points are also joined with a straight inclined line okay now friends see this one a concept that i am telling you nobody will tell you why this parabola is going like this it can go like this also between these two points why it is not going see this friends we know that friend the shear force is equal to dm by ds where dm is the bending moment okay as the shear force increases the dm by, uh, by dx will also increase and as the shear force decreases the dm by dx will also decrease so as we move from the point a to k the shear force is decreasing between these two points so as the shear force will decrease between as going from a to k that's why dm by dx will also decrease as going from uh, a to k so the slope of the bending moment curve which is denoted by dm by dx will also decrease as going from point a to k and this represent a decreasing slope why this curve which is concavity in this direction whereas this if we had we joined this these two point with this parabola suppose then it has a concavity this side but it will represent a increasing slope so that's why we have chosen here the decreasing slope why see here if this is the distance dx then dm will be this and if this is the same distance dx drawn here dx same length dx is drawn then dm will be this so dm is decreasing as we move from point a to k so the slope is also decreasing dm is decreasing that why slope of this is also decreasing okay and shear force is also decreasing front as we go from point a to k so that's why the curve is this similar is true for this these two points the parabola between these two points you can do it by yourself so this was all for today's topic friend if you like my video you can subscribe my channel and also